My name's Robin Galeen, Mayor of Horsham Rural City Council, and I welcome you to tonight's Facebook Q&A. I'd like to also acknowledge that tonight we're joined by our CEO of Horsham Rural City Council, Mr. Sunil Bala, and our three directors, Mr. Graham Harrison, Director of Corporate Services, uh, Mr. John Martin, Director of Infrastructure, and Mr. Kevin O'Brien, Director of Communities in Place, and they will assist in answering the questions tonight. So thank you to those residents who've already submitted um, their questions. If you're watching live, you're able to provide your own questions uh, just by com commenting in the Facebook um, under the video there. So I'll start with our first question from Belinda. Horsham really needs another road bridge across, across the river. Why is council planning another pedestrian bridge instead? Mr. Bala, would you like to answer that question, please? Thanks, Robin, and thanks for your question, Belinda. We need both a road bridge and also a pedestrian bridge. The pedestrian bridge at the planned location in Hamilton Street will serve a growing community in that part of Horsham, close to numerous schools. It will also provide a nice bicycle and pedestrian loop along the river for residents and visitors to the town. Council Thank has you. developed an urban transport plan to guide future development of road network in Horsham. This plan has ad identified the need for an alternative truck route around Horsham to remove the tra trucks traveling through the town which will also include a second bridge crossing of the river. This truck route and the road bridge will cost millions of dollars and will have to be funded by the state and federal governments. Following funding announcement by the Deputy Prime Minister last Monday, he was in Horsham last Monday, the planning for the truck route and the road bridge is expected to commence shortly. Thank you, Mr. Bala. We now have a question from Brittany. How can, what can Horsham do to attract larger musical festivals and big bands that don't play shows at the Sound Shell because it is too small? This would help keep more young people in Horsham. Mr. O'Brien, would you like to answer that question, please? Thanks, Robin. Yeah, so at the moment, we, we're quite aware of the issues of the uh, uh, constraints of Sawyer Park, uh, and we we're doing some planning of the City Able Sawyer Park precincts. And one of the key parts of that is to ensure that we not only plan for the future uh, recreation sporting needs of City Able, but also look how we can create a better connection between Sawyer Park and City Able for major events. So with the planning so far, so far we've got some uh, key uh, input from event organisers to look at how we actually can um, enable those major event opportunities to come online, uh, improve the current facilities, not only the sound show, but also uh, enable um, a better access to uh, and utilisation of City Able so that we can actually get those significant major events, music festivals to, to Horsham uh, so that uh, we can get our whole community, but particularly young people to enjoy the, um, the, the festival on their, on their actual doorstep. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. I have a question from Sharon. Some reports say farmers are getting a rates decrease and other reports say the rates for people on farms are going up by 10%. What is the truth and how does it affect the rates of people living in town? Mr. Harrison, would you like to address that answer, please? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, sorry, I'll just... <sighs> Yeah, so look, rates are both a simple but also a complex and, and difficult thing to explain, um, but I'll give it a go. Um, overall, council rates will rise by only 1.5%, which is the minister's, minister's rate cap. But what happens with an individual's rate um, will depend on very much on what their own individual property value has, has done with respect to the average. So if your value... Um, this is your property value rises more than the average value across the whole municipality, then your rates are going to rise by more than 1.5% and vice versa. If, you, if your property value doesn't rise as much as the average, then your, your, your rates will go down. So for farms this year, um, their property values have risen on average by 27%. So that's a significant increase um, for farm values in, in one year, 27% percent increase for farms compared to residential values which only rose by 4.5 percent. So if council had actually done nothing 
um, in terms of the farm rates, um, then what would have happened is farm rates would have risen by around about 18% and residential rates would have fallen by 3%. So in order to balance that, what council did or has proposed is to adjust the farm differential, which is um, giving the farm sector a further 8% discount, which means that on average, when compared back to last year's budget, the farm rates will go up by 10% and the residential sector will go up by 3%. So effectively, what's, what we've done is we've given a larger discount um, to the farm sector, and that discount has been passed on to the residential sector. But even after that additional um, change in the differential, um, the net increase um, of farms will be 7% more than the residential sector. So it'll be the 10% increase less the 3% increase. So the difference uh, between the farm and the residential sector is a 7% is a increase more. I, I did say it, it's never straightforward, but hopefully that explains it. And we've also proposing to reduce the municipal charge for all households from 274 to $240, which also is going to benefit every household who pays the municipal charge. So thank you, Mr. Harrison. And it is incredibly complex. Um, being new to council, I certainly have um, appreciate the challenges that uh, that we have in balancing the books. Um, we now have a question from Bruce. Where is the rural road network plan at? Nothing seems to have happened for over a year. Mr. Martin. Uh, thanks, Robin. Look, that's absolutely correct. Nothing did happen for a year. In about March of last year, we had a series of meetings across the municipality at which we were gonna seek input from our rural rate payers into the rural road network. We had to cancel those consultation sessions because of COVID. But uh, just last week, we have now held eight initial sessions across the municipality. We're conscious that those sessions may have clashed with cropping for some people. So we, over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna do some follow-up engagement, which will be well advertised. What we're gonna do is compile the feedback that we have received to date, so that people can get a look at something based on the initial input that we've had from farmers and other people who live in our rural communities and will provide an opportunity for people to have input into that work, as I say, over the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Uh, we now have a question from Craig. What is happening to develop more parkland in Horsham North and in particular the old rail yards? Mr. O'Brien, would you like to address that question, please? Thanks, Robin, and thanks, Craig, for your question. The, um, just first, I'd refer uh, in the first instance to the rail corridor. So uh, since 2016, we've had a plan to um, redevelop the railway corridor and look at um, improving open space in that area. Um, one of the key issues there is that um, because of the, um, some of the contamination issues within the rail corridor, uh, sort of north of the railway station, uh, 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 Vic Track actually has to um, complete some cleanup uh, requirements around uh, remediation uh, as a result of an EPA notice, which they need to do by the end of next year. Uh, what that's actually meant is it's, it's put on hold um, our, um, even though we're still having ongoing discussion with VicTrack uh, around getting that um, particular rail yards redeveloped. So we're very keen to redevelop those rail yards, but obviously they need to be remediated and then we need to work through, through a lot, uh, to look at how we, can actually um, take on some of that um, that land and then redevelop that for public open space. That's certainly council's intent. So uh, we're very mindful of it, but um, we need to ensure um, that Big Track do, does what they require to do as far as the, the cleanup notice in the first instance, so we can improve public open space um, along the railway corridor. Uh, in other parts of Horsham North, we uh, are mindful through our open space step strategy that. Um, some of the um, open space throughout the Horsham North needs to be improved. So uh, we wanting we will be looking at committing some funds to improve out the playgrounds and so forth. Uh, there's also been a fair bit of work done in um, Dudley Cornell with new facilities and uh, and so forth there. And but we are mindful that we need to um, improve um, various um, open space areas across Horsham North. So that's something that um, uh, we'll be looking at to, to rolling out over the over the coming years. 
Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. We now have a question from Billy. Are we any closer to getting a bypass? Mr. Bala. Thank you, Robin, and thank you for your question, Billy. The bypass of Horsham, uh, as was previously proposed by Vic Roads, had few issues. It was going to bypass only the traffic along the Western Highway. We need a solution which also addresses the truck traffic along the other three highways which uh, traverse Horsham, uh, the Vimra Highway and the Henty Highway. With a huge price tag, the bypass of Horsham is unlikely, if not impossible, for many, many years. The Horsham Urban Transport Plan uh, this council has developed, which I mentioned earlier, instead focuses on an alternative truck route, which can divert all through truck traffic around Horsham. The truck route will hugely increase the safety and amenity along the existing highways to the town and the CBD, will be much more cost effective and can be delivered much sooner. Thank you, Mr. Bala. We now have a question from Fletcher. Why can't we build a ring road at Curran Road and a second bridge over the river to bring all the trucks out of town? They can rejoin the highway at the Caltex Roadhouse. Mr. Martin, would you like to comment? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, and uh, our CEO, Sunil, indicated an earlier answer to a question that uh, earlier this week, there was a funding announcement for the study of the alternative truck route that uh, came up in the previous answer as well. So we're keen for that study to proceed. As an input to that though, Council doesn't have a predetermined view on where the best route for an alternative truck route would be. So the, the route that uh, the Fletcher suggests is, I anticipate one of a number of options that will be considered as part of that study. We don't yet know the timing of that study. The funding's only just been announced this week. So we expect to hear more on that fairly shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. We have a question from Craig. What about spending a bit of money out at Haven as it's beginning to be our biggest growth area? Mr. O'Brien. Uh, thanks, Robin, and thanks, Craig, for the question. So um, we're, well, we're, we're very well aware of the, um, the growth we, uh, around Haven. Uh, we're actually uh, in the process of developing a structure plan for Horsham South, and uh, uh, it includes, in fact, by the time we, it's quite a significant planning exercise by the time we work that through. And part of that is to clearly articulate what that uh, future growth looks like uh, through that area and then how that informs what um, facilities, um, open space, um, access paths uh, and so forth, um, transport connections through that whole portion of the south. Um, what the uh, structure plan has identified is that we need to improve community facilities, particularly uh, at Haven. And so we're actually undergoing a, a precinct planning exercise at Haven. Uh, we have done some works recently on a on some better car parking in, around the school there, and there's still a further line marking works to, um, to uh, work through as well. We're also um, actually having quite a, some discussions also with uh, various uh, user groups of, of Haven. So, it also includes looking at the uh, currently the community hall and seeing uh, what the future needs are and making sure that we plan for those future needs and develop the facilities to meet those needs. So uh, certainly um, quite aware of, of the growth we expect for Haven and uh, we're, we're working through uh, what that will mean for the community uh, and therefore looking at getting some plans and, uh, some, and develop up some designs and so forth around uh, uh, facilities that will meet that future community need. Great, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. We have a question from David. Is the 1.5% rate increase due to the councillors giving themselves a pay rise? Mr. O'Brien, would you like to speak to the budget, please? Sorry, I think that is going to Graham, so. Um... <laughs> Beg your pardon, I meant Mr. Harrison, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> That's great. It's quite all right, Madam Mayor. Um, look, certainly not. The 1.5% um, the rate increase um, generates around about close to nearly $400,000. Um, council's got a lot of different cost pressures. Um, we, <clears throat> we deliver about 80 plus services. Um, we've got a total budget of nearly $60 million. Uh, the extra costs associated with paying the councillors at the at the the um, top of the allowance band uh, is around about $50,000. So it certainly has not um, been the reason for the 1.5% rate increase. 
Thank you. We have a question from Jacinta. Congrats on getting the Nature and Water Play Park. When will it be finished and ready to use? Mr. Bala. Thank you, Robin. And thank you for your question, Jacinta. Works on the Nature and Water Play Park are planned to start in September with the expected completion in December 2022. So it will roughly take us 15 months to finish the project. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Well, they're all the questions that were pre-submitted and I know, and there's no further questions have been asked. So I'll just do a quick run round to see if there's anything that um, any of you would like to, to add to um, tonight's session before we, um, we say thank you and close. Mr. Butler, would you like to start, please? No, nothing more from me, Robin. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Martin. Oh, look, thanks, Madam Mayor. There's just one thing I'd like to touch on, and, and that is we've got a bit of a change to the nature of our road program this year. We've been looking at ways to improve the, the cost effectiveness of our program, which I'm sure is of uh, interest to our ratepayers to ensure we're investing wisely. Uh, and we've been using technology such as uh, laser sensing of the roughness of our road lengths, our sealed roads. Uh, traditionally, what we've done is when we've had a problem with a section of road, we've normally worked on sections of road in rural areas that might be a kilometre or, or longer and uh, reconstructed the whole section at one time. But with this laser data, we can now break the, the road system up into 20 metre lengths and only actually fix the sections of road that are in the rough conditions. So hopefully that means we'll be able to get around to a greater number of rough sections, uh, shorter lengths, but uh, a greater number of them and, and really address the hotspots that uh, many of our rural road users talk about to us um, uh, on a regular basis. So that's one of a series of measures that we're trying to put in place to make the dollars go further, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Now, I've had um, a few people comment on the Auto Seal um, article that was in the Weekly Advertiser today. Would you like to comment on that too? Yes, Thanks. indeed, Madam Mayor. And that's part of the trial of a few different things to as to improve the cost effectiveness of our of our program the otter seal o -T -T -A, is a, is a different technique from normal road construction it's only suitable for well what have been traditionally gravel roads with low to moderate traffic levels it's not suitable for higher traffic roads but it's a cheaper form of putting a seal on which according to experience in other areas could be cheaper than maintaining a road as a gravel road in the long term so we've recently done two pilot sections, we're calling them, of Otter Seal, a short section in Arnott's Road, Laharam, and uh, a, a lengthier section in Plush Hannon's Road out at Lower Norton. So that provides now uh, an all-weather sealed surface. It's only in the early days, so people will be aware that there's loose stones here at present. It, it doesn't look like the finished product yet, but it, it creates a potential for us to, as I say, reduce our long-term maintenance costs and help make the dollars go further with our road maintenance program. So early days, we'll monitor that over the next six to 12 months and see how it goes. And uh, if it proves effective, uh, then we should be looking at doing some more of that. Terrific, thank you. Uh, Mr. Harrison, is there anything that you'd like to add about the budget that we haven't already covered? Yeah, I suppose I'll just, um, just generally around the process, obviously the, um, as I mentioned before, the, the budget is a, you know, a $60 million budget. Um, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of complexities, uh, a lot of different programs and, and services that we're delivering. Um, so what I'd do is just like to do is encourage people. We, we're going to have a, um, a drop-in session if someone wants to ask some more detailed questions. Um, we haven't actually locked those dates and time in, times in yet, but it will be... Um, uh, an, an evening and a lunchtime um, in the next couple of weeks. So if we, um, if you have a burning question that you want to sort of get answered in more detail, then I'd, I'll be in, look out for those dates and um, encourage people to come along and, and ask um, more detailed questions when um, officers will have time to respond. Um, the other thing obviously around the budget is people can make a submission so there is an opportunity up until uh, 5 p.m. on the 7th of June for people to make a submission. They can make that submission by going to our website and having a look at the Have Your Say page. 
and under that you'll see the budget um, 2122 and there's a link there to a, a a simple little form that just asks for a uh, for you to complete some um, personal contact details and what your submission is um, either on the budget or on the revenue and rating plan you can also just simply write us a letter um, and um, the details of that are on the website, but basically sending it to council support here at the uh, Civic Centre Roberts Avenue, or you can um, also do it via email as well to council at, at hrcc.vic.gov.au. So there's a few ways that um, people can make a submission um, and we'd in certainly encourage people to do that. Uh, you can also be heard by council on your submission so if you want to do that, you can um, mention that and uh, we will hear uh, submitters on the uh, Wednesday, the 9th of June. Um, and then um, Council will consider all of the submissions over the, the uh, couple of weeks, basically before we adopt the final budget on the 28th, I think it is, of June, is the Council meeting date. So that's sort of broadly the process for the budget. Um, and I suppose just while I've, I've got the opportunity, the other thing that links into the budget is just is the community vision and the council plan, uh, which council has been um, had a campaign running now for a number of weeks called Horsham Talks, um, where we're trying to get um, as many comments and views from people uh, from all sectors of the community, young and old, and no matter where you live. Um, so there's opportunities again on our on our website to sort of to just do an online survey. Uh, it's a quick five question um, and answer um, survey on the on the website. All that information will come together and be fed into a community panel, um, which will um, help. Um, well, the community panel will will provide us with a community vision for the next 20 years, and um, they will also provide input to our uh, other key planning documents being the council plan, asset plans and long-term financial plans. So there's a lot happening, but um, in terms of the future direction of council and the, and the budget and um, those documents are really key in setting the strategic direction. So I'd encourage people, it's only open for another, uh, only open till Sunday. So you've got till this Sunday to, um, to get in and, and put some comments on that but submissions to the budget are open until the 7th of June. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. And I spent a couple of hours in Robert's Place today talking to uh, residents uh, passing by about the budget. And last Friday, we spent about four hours, I think, down in Robert's Place talking community vision. And it was fabulous talking to all different people, all different wakes, rate, um, walks of life, all different age groups, demographics. It was terrific. And uh, I certainly encourage people to have their say as well. Mr. O'Brien, is there anything you would like to say in closing? No, no, nothing further. Robin, thank you. Madam Mayor, if I may, I just see that uh, Craig from, I think he's interested in Haven, um, didn't necessarily hear the response earlier to his question. He might have joined us late. So I wonder if we can have the question about Haven asked and answered again to help Craig out. Certainly, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, so, yeah, so Craig, thank you for your question. Uh, we are doing uh, a lot of work in uh, Haven, particularly or, or, or Horsham South regarding our planning around the structure plans. So we're mindful of, we've got a very good understanding of what we see as the growth in Horsham South, and uh, and uh, we also are doing some uh, precinct uh, plan at Haven. We've just commenced the process, so to meet some of those future needs. So uh, we uh, and recently there's been some upgrades to the car park at Haven. So uh, we we are aware that um, we need to meet um, some changing needs with Haven, and uh, we, we're well advanced now with our planning around what we uh, need to provide for that community uh, into the future. Thank you. So I'd like to thank um, the CEO, Sunil, and John, Graham, and Kevin, for our directors, for joining me here tonight. Thank you to the community members who've sent in their questions and to all of those who've taken the time to watch. I hope this has been informative. And as Mr. Harrison said, we're going to have a couple more opportunities, some drop-in sessions uh, in the next couple of weeks for residents to call in and have a, have a chat about some of the different aspects of the budget. It 
that uh, takes many months to put together and is incredibly complex. So happy to um, come to welcome anyone to answer their more technical and detailed questions. So thank you very much. And I wish you a good evening. <laughs>